All right, so if you guys saw our last video on this part, we thought the machining sounded so good that we decided to give you a video with no talking in it whatsoever. But today, I wanna to go over a few things that we had to really think about and strategize about a part this size going in this machine. Oh yeah, smooth like butter. Ah. All right, so the first thing that we had to worry about is that now our center of gravity is way up here. That means that during our pallet change, we're gonna be risking this thing toppling off the pallet change arms, and if that happens, we're never gonna be able to get it out of the machine. So, we didn't do a full speed pallet change, we just bumped it into the machine very carefully, watching to make sure that we didn't get any tipping action. The next thing that we really had to think about was our fixturing. We knew that this part was gonna be in our machine for a week or longer, and we had the Boombastic Open House event coming up, so we knew we were gonna have to take this part out of the machine and then put it back in, and our Vero S quick change pallet system enabled us to do that with under two tenths repeatability. So even if I would've had this part semi-finished already, I know we would've been good on location to complete our finishing operation. And speaking of Boombastic, we still have some insane deals going on right now through the end of the month, so head on over to our website and take advantage. Now, the next thing that we had to think about was the cutting tools that we were gonna use to process this part. Now, normally, if you have to remove 1,200 pounds of material from a part, you're gonna be using indexable shell mills or indexable end mills. The only problem was, after I wrote the program to rough all the part with the indexable shell mill, you can see that I still had a lot of areas on the part where there was material left, and I was gonna have to come in with an end mill after the fact anyway to remove all that material. So that would have been a total of about 60 hours worth of machining. So, me and Titan sat down, and Titan recommended that we use the Harvey 1 TE end mill to rough the entire part. Now, because of that, what we had to do was leave 100,000's minimum extra stock on the part because we knew we were gonna break a cutter. Oh, no. By using the end mill, we ended up taking our roughing from 60 hours down to 16, and the cost of that end mill is roughly $500. So if we spend a couple hundred dollars to save 40 hours worth of machining time, it's totally worth it. Now you can see all this extra material that's left when we use the shell mill, and if you take a look at our stock model from when we just used the end mill, you can see that all that underneath these feet and stuff is gone. Now I could have just looked at this front side of the part, machined everything that that end mill could reach all in one shot, and then just did another eight rotations or so and we would have been done roughing the whole part. But what we decided to do instead was we were gonna rough the part in sections. So we started at the top of the part and we roughed everything up there in the top third. What this did was allow us to keep a very rigid and solid base so that we get the least amount of vibration possible during our roughing process. After we got the top third roughed, we went ahead and roughed the second third. Once we had our second, third rough, we went ahead and roughed the part the rest of the way through. Now most machinists are gonna have experience with parts that are very, very small and parts that are very, very big. You just never know what's gonna walk through that door, especially if you're working at a job shop. So it's good to see methods used in machining parts of all different sizes that way, when you have to do the same thing, you're gonna be prepared and you're gonna have an idea of how you wanna process your parts. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember that it's not always about the experience that you have, but it's about the things that you've seen other machinists do. So hopefully this video will help you out in the future. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys again next time.